Yeah. Hey, chat, I'm back. Hey, chat, I'm back. Um, sorry, I just got disconnected. Waiting for you guys to jump back on. I lost all the I lost all the chat feed. I lost all the chat feed that was that, but I, I took a snapshot before it died. So hopefully you guys jump back on. Uh, Steve, Steven, thanks for watching. Um, do the 19 DDP teams have upgraded oil pickup tubes? The 19s do have upgraded. I uh, would still just keep an eye on that. Um, I don't see a lot of 19s coming in at 500,000 miles for that particular low oil. Thank you back. Yes, sir. Sorry, man. I don't know what happened. We lost, we lost, uh, we lost connection. It, that sucks. We had everybody going, everybody going good. I did take a snapshot of the, of the rest of the questions. I like the new ISX 15. Yeah, those, those are nice. Those are nice as well. I like Cummins uh, engines as well, as I mentioned. Um, I'm a big fan of all platforms. Have you had intermittent issues with SCR conversion efficiency issue? Meaning dozer is clean, uh, decomp tube and dozer injector proper fluid, but still passes SCR test and uh, insight. You know what? That's very interesting that you asked that Dustin. We just did a video about uh, low NOx conversion efficiency. Uh, I was covering how the SCR system works and how to use the test in your, in your, with your tools to kind of find where, where the problem is. So let me see if I can help you real quick here. I, if to answer your question, I do. We, there is a lot of intermitting SCR faults. Um, that's a big problem that we see. So that's and, and that's why I mentioned to the viewers and customers. Uh, he says no sound. Is there no sound? So tires. Uh, let me see. Can you guys hear me? I'm getting a, I'm getting the audio saying no sound. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, false alarm, guys. I'm trying to keep you guys informed. Back to the SCR system. Okay, th thanks, Dustin. Back to the SCR system. Um, SCR systems. Okay, I'm sorry. I lost my place here. SCR version, meaning those are okay. So you're going through the steps, making sure you don't have any fault codes coming from the engine because um, any fault codes, like I mentioned when we talked about the D13 earlier. The D13 is going to have issues with a clogged EGR valve or a clogged EGR cooler, a bad sensor on the intake side that's not reading correctly because it's built up with soot, the EGR differential pressure sensor. Any of those sensors that are built up with soot is not going to let that engine work the way it needs to. So it, in turn, it could cause more nitrous oxide or NOx. I don't want to, sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, no, too much NOx. So then... You're gonna try to turn around and, and let me see, NOx, my Cascadia's. So check that out. Make sure you're not having any engine faults. Make sure you're, you're right, you're taking the right steps. You cleaned out the dozer. Uh, there's another test that uh, checks how much it, the dozer is actually dozing. It's called a quantity test. So you wanna make sure to do that quantity test and make sure you're getting enough dozing uh, into the system. If you are getting enough dozing into the system, then you may have build up into the system. So a way to check that out, if you can run uh, in Insight, you got to, there's a test you can run that's checking NOx readings. You need to run through that to make sure your NOx is not showing maybe too much soot, I'm sorry, uh, too much reading of uh, incorrect readings because you have maybe build up of SCR in the system. I'm sorry guys if I'm stumbling a little bit, I'm a little tired, we've been shooting all day. I appreciate your guys' questions. I'm trying to get to everybody. Uh, we, we, we shot a lengthy video on this just today, Dustin, so that's a good question. It's a lot to cover, so I'm trying to get as much as I can out. So make sure you don't have a buildup in the system as well. That's going to cause you some problems. Make sure your, your delivery side of the system is working correctly. Um, let me keep moving along, along here. DD, restart your system. Okay, thank you. 2012 Cascadia AC intermitting working. Okay, if your AC is intermitting, that's a whole nother subject there. Check your sensors. A lot of times I'll see like a low pressure or a high pressure switch um, that's plugged into the one of your AC lines. This one's, uh, that truck's probably going to be behind the truck air filter. 
Um, so it's a two wire or three wire plug. I don't, don't quote me exactly on it, but what I see happens is that wire is just swinging around in there and it can be losing connection. Uh, I'll be more than happy to check it out for you or have an AC technician maybe check it out. Uh, Steven, you're at work, so I would check to see if your levels are right on your on your Freon before trying to inject more. If if your levels are right, then uh, and you see it intermitting, it's turning off. Make sure you're not lines aren't any freezing or anything like that. Cab cab filters are very important. It's starting to get hot out here, guys. So make sure you're changing your cab filter. Um, let me try to wrap this up. I'm kind of getting really kind of a little bit tired. I don't, I don't want to be uh, stumbling too much on my words. So let me see. Hey, what is up, bro? Is the oil pressure supposed to rise and drop on the DD15 once you let the throttle off? Yes, sir. So, Gabriel, whenever you're accelerating the pedal, um, the oil pump is gear driven. So, what that means is when the RPMs rise, that means the pump is going to spin faster. Of course, it's going to make um, pressure rise. So, yes, you're that that's that's working correctly. Um, as long as it's not like a super spike and you get an alarm and uh, then I would, I would, uh, yeah, we lost video earlier, uh, earlier. Hopefully we didn't just lose video. I just saw this comment coming on chat. Okay. You know, NOX efficiency, my Cascadia always have that problem useful there to box sensor DF leak in, but I have one truck, even the dealer couldn't find out. Okay. So transport, we just did a video on that today. So that's very interesting that you bring that up. And that's the reason why I brought that. I, we were di we did that video because of the amount of calls and the amount of questions that I have on uh, NOx um, conversion efficiency low. Now, I'm hoping that the dealer went through all the steps. Um, if, if you ha don't have any luck with them, if you're in the area, I would be more than happy to help you. I know that's tough out there. You're going to have people say, change out your NOx sensors. But um, as I mentioned, I had another guy on chat ask about NOx as well. That's not an easy. That's not an easy problem. You got to understand the, understand how the system works uh, to better kind of isolate your problem. Um, Detroit has a step by step program, very useful. Um, Cummins is the same way. All these systems, they basically are the same systems, um, but you just got to understand them so to to better to better kind of troubleshoot them. If not, then of course you're gonna have somebody tell you you need to replace the box. If they did check everything and they and they did do it's called a low ATD test. Basically, they're disabling they're disabling the um, the DEF dozing into the into the SCR system. When they disable the SCR system and they run a low temp test, basically they're just seeing what type of readings they're getting from the NOx NOx sensors. If there's no DEF being injected into the system, you're supposed to be getting uh, no more than 50 ppm of parts reading from your inlet and outlet. I don't want to get too technical with you guys, but if those readings aren't correct or if there's any spikes in those readings, then uh, it's possible you can have a bad NOx. And the way that we usually troubleshoot it is we replace one, we retest the test that I just mentioned, and after that, of course, uh, replace the output. So I uh, appreciate that question. If if say for example, and I and I I said this in the in the video that we're recording, we're going to be releasing that this week. So hope make sure to check that out, um, and and that helps you gives you a little bit more information on, on this particular test. So if you do the test and the NOx are, are fine and you, they don't find anything, then unfortunately, and there's no there's no engine faults, nothing going on there. You're not getting excessive black smoke from the engine, uh, and the engine's not creating excessive black smoke. Um, then then of course you're probably going to have to change out that one box. But make sure all these steps are being checked before condemning the one box. I'm talking about everything that I just mentioned. Uh, I, I'd hate for anybody to change out a one box um, that that's not needed. That's going to be very very expensive. Best place to buy used Cascadia. You know, right now there's the used truck market is very very. Uh, it's, it's a buyer's market right now. There's a lot of people that exit the industry, so it's a good time to buy. And what I always tell my uh, viewers and customers when buying a used vehicle our used truck is to get as much maintenance history as possible. Um, a lot of times these fleets are running these trucks with an agreement with the dealer to turn these back in at a certain miles. So within those miles, they're not doing any kind of PM services or any kind of uh, preventive maintenance services basically and turning those trucks in and that problem could end up being your problem. So keep that in mind when buying a used truck, if you can get maintenance history and see if you can get it looked at by a, uh, a technician, 
so they can pull fault history codes, anything like that that can possibly uh, keep you down or, or, or put you in the wrong the wrong position where you're just buying a truck and right away you have to have a treatment problem. They they will sell you warranties. There's different types of warranties out there. Um, most of the warranties aren't going to be like just easy, easy to work with. So it's good to, again, back to a shop that's experienced. If they, they work with a warranty companies, they know how to, how to, how to work with them and what to word. So they don't try to deny claims on you because they like, they do that pretty often. Okay. I have a 2016 glider kit started knocking from under the bottom. So I shut it down and had to tow it home. My, mo my motor is a Detroit 60 series. Any idea if it's a knocking noise, how many miles are on it? Um, you say the glider, so of course, is that a is that just a fresh build? If it is a fresh build, um, maybe get back to the builders and, and and make sure everything's correct. If it's a if it's a knocking noise you haven't heard before, I would definitely get the get it looked at. Um, if it was a new build, like I mentioned, taking taking you know the bearings apart and, and, and getting getting them looked at, you want to make sure nothing's happening. If you have um, maybe some so a rod bearing bolts that are maybe they might be stretched out or something not torqued correctly. You could uh, pretty much throw a rod at the side of the engine. It could be very damaging. Uh, do you work on trailers? We do work on trailers. Uh, we do uh, pretty much all the maintenance on trailers. If it's anything that has to do with structural work, we don't work on. So hopefully that helps you. Uh, can you tell if the DLC filter check valve is bad? Okay. So, you're asking about a check valve. If it's going bad on a fuel system, how can you tell? Um, it depends on what type of problems you're having. So if you're, if you're having a hard start in the morning, um, and it depends on what type of engine it is, if you have a hard start in the morning, yes, you could have a, a check valve um, going out. That's usually indication of a check valve going out if you have hard starts. Uh, if you're losing prime after sitting for a while, that, that's an uh, indication of a check valve. So guys, let me see what's next. Appreciate it. I just asked, do if I replace numerous SCRs and and I refresh. Okay, three sensors. Okay, they cut the cost. SCR in half. Comments. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a common problem. This is another question. Just going circ going back to the SCR, SCR. That's this SCR conversions is a is a very tough problem to fix. Um, understanding as I mentioned the system and checking out all those other components is going to help you because uh, SCR system. Basically, of course, it's trying to cut down nitrous oxide or, you know, don't quote me exactly, NOx is, is, is ready to, it's, it's working to cut down NOx, um, but you want to make sure everything's working correctly. Like you're, it, nowadays you're using a, a VG style turbo that's controlling how much boost pressure and intakes going into the system, almost kind of like an engine brake as well, like an engine back pressure brake as well. So all these all, EGR is opening and closing. Uh, you know, going through the EGR cooler. So all these components are working together to control NOx coming out of the engine. So if you have an issue more upstream, then it's possible that you, you could uh, still be having a problem even after a box replacement. So yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's pretty tough to get those figured out sometimes. Okay. Uh, we're, looks like we're wrapping it up. Uh, take care, brother. Got a truck rolling. Okay. Good job. Okay, if you guys are, are coming by through Hutchins, Texas or Dallas, Texas, the Interstate 20, if you, if you need any help, make sure to stop by. Uh, I've mentioned to this before, if you have anybody that may be finding this channel useful, uh, please refer them to us or recommend our channel so we can get some more subscribers. I appreciate your guys' views. I'm going to get as much content as we can out there. Uh, if you guys have any specific questions, as I mentioned, thanks for all the questions that came in. We're going to be doing more live videos for you guys. What's up, bro? TTG from North Carolina. I spoke with you on Friday about the accelerator. Okay, cool. So Stephen called me, and you know what? I was, I was, he caught me right in the middle. I was right in the middle of a phone call, and I want to say it was uh, throttle position sensor, TPS. That's the word I was looking for when he called. So Steve called, Stephen called me. Uh, he was having issues with erratic, uh, erratic throttle. And he said he had some active faults in the past, um, but this fault was a new fault and it had a lost connection or, or erratic erratic uh, throttle position. So in that case, I recommended him replace the throttle position. So hopefully that worked. Did that work for you? Um, if you can answer back on chat, I appreciate that. Hopefully that worked out for you. Um, let me see what's going Hey, 
Volvo D13. That, yep, it's a good engine. Okay, back at it. So thanks, Steven. Thanks for the comment. I'm glad I was able to help you guys. I appreciate the time, guys. Okay, so we're, we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, Steven, thanks for reaching out to you guys. Thanks for everybody on chat. Uh, check out the videos we got coming out this week, guys. Um, we got some new stuff coming out. We got a big announcements coming up. And also, we're going to be redoing this whole streaming thing that we're this live that we're doing now. We're going to be whole re reamping it out. So, uh, guys, if you, as again, if you got any questions or concerns, hit us up. We'll be more than happy to help. Thanks for all the support, guys. I appreciate all your help uh, and all your support. Let me see here. Okay, so not even. It was a throttle valve. So you know what? Um, I was about to close it down. Stephen, just thanks for feeding feeding this back. This is why it's really important for us to get uh, some some exact information. You know, when you when you caught me on the road, I was driving. I thought we were talking about uh, throttle. I thought so, but if it was the actual intake throttle, then that would make sense. So that's good that you got it checked out. You probably got it checked out with somebody on the computer. And that's exactly what we would have did if we were actually able to hook up to it with the computer. When we hook up with to the computer, it's actually going to give us the exact the exact description description of what's going on. So that's, that's something that we really like to to hook up before. Uh, but either way, I'm glad you were able to get that fixed. Thanks for the feedback. Uh, hope uh, let me see your face is good good as new. So whenever we get that uh, throttle valve fault, what the way we we verify it is we're able to hook up the computer remove the uh the boot off the intake and run a position test so that throttle valve is supposed to open and close all the way so when we command it you can see it and you're right they get stuck and yeah have your truck running very bad very bad so you you were able to describe it very well when uh, the fault um i think it would have probably just been better for me if i would have been able to hook up to get the exact code description so i appreciate uh appreciate your input uh so I'm glad I'm glad you were able to get that going. Hopefully you replace those O-rings too. They take two O-rings around the, both sides. Uh, make sure you don't have any boost leaks. If you did the repair yourself, make sure you don't have any boost leaks because uh, you, you will still be having some low power issues. So yeah, or you know, yeah, check out my video. We got some videos out there as well. I have a Cascadia. I mean, you need to replace air brake compressor. Okay, you're on. You got okay, Cascadia. He's got a Cummins. Need to replace air brake compressor. Uh, do you need the time? Need to be. Are you asking me how much time that takes? Is uh, I'm not sure what the question that Curtis. If you're asking about the time, I would suggest maybe a labor guide to so that kind of if you have a lot of questions about how long it's taking you if you're running a shop, I would look into a labor guide. Get you a labor guide that's going to help you get those times in. Which is a better DD15 or bubble? I'm a fan of both engines, but if I would choose an engine, I'd probably go with a DD15. And it also depends on maintenance records. Um, I like D13 Volvos too, especially if they're if they're running in good shape. They're really fast trucks. They got I like Volvos. They 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 they're really smooth. Um, I really like driving those, so that's a tough decision. Do you think products like power service diesel boosts are efficient? You know, I, I can't comment on them. I'd, I'd have to look do some research on them. Uh, so I'm sorry if I if I can't give you a quick answer on that one. DD13, DD13. Okay, DD13 versus a D13. So a DD13 is going to be a smaller engine compared to a D13 Volvo. Uh, so out of those two, I would go with a D13 Volvo. It all depends on the maintenance as well. So and price and everything. So keep all that in mind. The reason I figured it out is because I watched your video on throttle valve and the NGR valve. Oh, go oh, cool, Stephen. Cool, man. I, I I feel kind of bad that I was, you know, almost pointing you in the wrong direction, man. I, you know, I just, I want to help you guys out. I really like helping you guys out, you know. But sometimes if I don't have the exact description from the engine, what's going on? So, but I'm glad you. Stephen says here that he figured it out by watching one of my other videos, and that's another reason why we do those videos to help you guys out. You know, I I really enjoy helping you guys out. Um, you know when the guy i mentioned on the last video when we went live and it got disconnected hopefully he's watching he was having issues with alignment and he was having his truck all over the road so i had suggest he got an alignment uh, on the truck uh, and also make sure he's scaling and distributing his weight correctly so it can be a little bit safer out there so hopefully everything's good 
your DD15 is back. I'm glad to hear that. It ain't nothing like a good run in DD15. I, I know that. And um, we get a lot. We get a lot of DD15s in. Unfortunately, they're not running strong. So I'm, I, I like to get them right, get them on back on the road. Um, but DD15s when they're running right, man, that good, 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 good trucks, man. Thoughts on a 2013 Volvo um, D13, 880k miles. It's got 17. Looks in excellent condition. Okay, so 880k. Um, that's a pretty high mileage. I would look at. Um, all, as I mentioned before, it all depends on your maintenance history. If these guys were keeping up really good maintenance history. And they got a lot of the major parts uh, already replaced because uh, after 500 K depends on the driver and the driveline setup. Of course, a clutch is going to be in the works. Of course, um, maybe a starter, uh, you know, just the uh, accessory items are going to be pretty much items that are going to have to be replaced. So are, are, are looked into being replaced. So checking that out. Uh, thanks, bro. Yes, sir. No problem, Steven. Uh, thanks for the coffee. Uh, somebody got me, uh, what was it, 15 on Cash App. I mean, that was very generous of you. I, thanks thanks a lot. I uh, appreciate that. Um, appreciate that. If that was through Cash App. Thanks. Your, uh, what's your thoughts on a diesel additive in general? Are they a waste of time, waste of money? AJ, uh, you know, I don't see any, any manufacturer recommending any kind of fuel additives. Uh, I used to be a fan of fuel additives, but if you look at like a Volvo engine, a Volvo, uh, these newer engines are running very, very small tolerance clearance through their injector nozzles. So it's very, very tight areas. And I mean, some injectors don't suggest you don't even use any kind of cleaner whenever you have them out. Or if you're, if you're repairing, a, repairing an engine, they don't want you to, they, they want you to put the injector in, a, in a, an actual tip, tip protector and, and stow them away. And some injectors we have to soak in fuel so they don't, you know, fault out. These newer injectors are becoming more delicate and delicate nowadays. So and that being said, I wouldn't suggest any cleaners just because if you break any deposits loose and it ends up getting into the injector system, it could do more harm than good. Um, if you're running an older 60 series, it'd probably be okay. But these newer engines are, they call them smart injectors, but they don't seem too smart. Um, they seem to be, they seem to be faulting out. So be very careful with those. Um, what do you think about an ECM tune for fuel mileage, thoughts and opinions? You know, I tunes are, you got to be careful when you talk about tunes because some tunes um, are trying to eliminate after treatment systems. And that's, you know, that's just something you can get in trouble with as a shop. So we don't really like to get into too much tunes. If it's something that's going to be staying with your manufacturer and keeping up with MPGs, but not breaking any federal laws. And I, I mean, I would, definitely just research it before you trying it out. I do get engines in the shop with bad tunes and they go bad. Uh, sometimes these tunes, these, these tuners are going to make a program and just sell it online. Uh, so without a good, you know, without, without researching them well, you can get a bad tune where basically all they're doing is dumping more fuel into the cylinder. So yeah, your engine might run good for a few months or maybe a year, but the overall life expectancy of that engine could be cut due to a bad tune. So be very careful with tunes. How do you think, uh, how do you type the motor mount screws on a 20? Okay, motor mount, which motor mount screws? Are you talking about the rear? Um, that's a pretty tough job right there. He's, he's asking about motor mounts on a Cascadia. You're asking us, how do we tighten them? Um, I'd have to look at it. It's been a while since I've done that job, particularly that job. That's probably somebody that's, uh, that's uh, that one of our heavy line guys in the shop that I can ask. If you'd like GS, email me. I can get that answer to you. Sorry, I don't have the question for you or the answer for you right away. I may have done it, uh, but it's been a while. So, you know, we do tons of repairs. Appreciate the input. Yes, sir. Uh, no problem. I did a starter. Did not fuel pump for 600K. At the fuel pump. Okay. Uh, if you're talking about, okay. So if you did the, what'd you do the starter for? That's fine. And was it out? Uh, and what engine are we talking about? If it's a Cascadia, more than likely DD15. So the starter is going to be on the passenger side, fuel pump on the driver's side. Um, so were you having issues with your fuel pump? That's why you were considering doing it. Um, let me see one of the OTR mechanics put a wrong spring on the passenger third axle airbag is stretched sideways. As she one of the OTR mechanics put a wrong 
spring on the passenger third axle airbag and stretching sideways. Oh man. So I don't, I don't G GS, are they going to fix it or what's going on with them? Why did they do that? Uh, it sounds like he put the wrong part on there and caused you some more downtime. What that's very frustrating. Uh, 2020, uh, 2012 Cascadia on guard system offline and blowing fuel gauge fuel. System. Okay. So if you got an on guard system, basically an on guard system is what's going to help with your cruise control and just keep you from um, wrecking out there. And I understand how frustrating it is because it's a, different system that's not basically uh, designed to where well, they're trying to get them to communicate the engine ECM, all the engine components and the truck components, you know, talking to this system. So uh, on guard, you have to have the software to troubleshoot that. Make sure you go to the right shop. Uh, I would check with a shop that has on guard that can troubleshoot it because it could be a radar. A lot of times when they put these on guard systems, the cable that's from, from, you know, the front radar, your side radars, um they're they're put on there after they're manufactured over time with the air and everything moving around you can get chafing you can lose connection from one of your radar and when that happens you're going to have you know you can have fall codes so definitely have somebody check that out that has on board okay great info thanks for uh, and you didn't run into 60 series okay good job yeah 60 series a good engine i'm not a big fan of the last 60 series and guys, I'm trying to wrap this up, but I'm, I'm, I enjoy all the questions coming in. So I, I, I apologize if I sound a little tired. We've been shooting all day, but I'm still trying to get information over to you. Yes, the 60 series, I like it. Uh, I don't like the last one that they made. Um, I mean, it's still a good engine, but I know they were just trying to meet emissions. I heard the D13 Volvo has a built-in oil bypass filter, and that is correct. Okay, a built-in oil bypass filter. You know, I'd have to do, you know, there's three oil filters that you have to replace on the D13. Um, so I don't know if there's a, if there's a built in one. Um, but every time we do a PM, we, there's three oil filters on the D13. So good info. Thanks. Yes, sir. I'm, we're doing fine, TJ. Thanks for hollering at us. Uh, let me see after I change the front air spring. GS, this is back to your, um, this is, this is back to your suspension problem after I change the front air spring. Uh, it sounds like you're getting, you're, you're, you're looking like you're looking at a repair or you're doing a repair. I'm sorry if I can't understand it uh, exactly. I wish I could uh, maybe get some video. GS, email me, send me some more information. Uh, maybe send me a video or type me out some more information on that. I know that you're, you're trying to get it all to me right now, but that seems like I'm going to need a lot more input on that so I can try to point you in the right direction. You share a lot of information. It means a lot of us drivers who know that repairs can be expensive. Thank you for all you do. I appreciate that comment, TJ. I really do. Um, you know, I like sharing. I like sharing information with you guys. I like learning. I never stop learning. I like reading. So I appreciate that. Okay. Appreciate the Cash App. Cash App is an application that you can download on your phone. Uh, and when you download the cash app to your phone, you're basically, you can just pay anywhere, anyone, anywhere. So it's, it's no charge to you. Uh, basically you download it for free. You link it to a bank card. You link it to any kind of checking account. It's a very trustful site. You can just look up the reviews, cash app, go to your app store, look up cash app. You can look at all the reviews of tons of people use this app. It's very popular app. Um, so that app is very secure and you're able to transfer to anybody, anybody, uh, anybody you like that has track cash app. If you look in the description of my videos, there's my cash app ID. If you, if you're into, if you're up to, uh, up for that, we did get a $15 cash app tip from somebody that learned something from my video. So we really appreciate that guys. I really appreciate that. It's not needed, but I really do appreciate it. Okay. Uh, when I do a cruise, I just like it gets stuck. GS, uh, if you're getting a throttle position sensor fault, it should, it should come up. If you're having issues with that, it sh you should have a fault come up. Yes, sir. No problem. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to help. Okay. Before you go series 60 versus cat C15, which do you like better? Thanks AJ. This is the last question I'm going to take and I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it up guys. Cause we try to wrap it up earlier and I had more questions come in. I like, I like the feedback. I really do guys. Uh, so he's asking me series 60s are cat. Now this is if a series 60 
before the last the last ones okay we're not talking about the ones that uh and i don't wanna i can pull it up here let me pull it up real quick now there's a 60 series that i don't like with the um the last egr system and dpf filter i don't like that i don't like that 60 series uh and, and if you have one i'm not trying to down and just make sure you keep up with maintenance but it's uh, just a lot of problems with that engine because they were trying to uh, work on uh, meeting all EPA standards. And the same thing with the CAT. If it's the last one that they made, then I'd, either one of those I probably wouldn't like just because they're both trying to meet EPA standards. And a lot of times when you have an engine platform that was already made like the 60 series and you have regulations that get put on top of the 60 series. So what they end up doing, instead of redesigning the whole engine like they ended up doing with the DD-15, they started adding components onto it as the as the regulations got stricter and stricter. So what that did is the engine was really wasn't designed from the bottom up to to be able to put that type of system on it. So it really just caused a lot of problems. The same thing with Caterpillar. They had to add on these different. They were putting IVAs in and they were you know, just changing all types of stuff to to uh, to control emissions. So those later model ones, um, I, I, I rather choose from the earlier model 60 series and caterpillars that pre egr i know that uh, uh, you guys probably wouldn't uh ask about this but if we're asking about he's asking specifically 60 series or caterpillar since caterpillar stopped manufacturing engines this is why we're going this far back uh 60 series to stop manufacturing as well so we're going before actual emissions now the newer engines if we're talking about detroit or Caterpillar, of course, Caterpillar is not making any engines right now, so I would definitely go with a D15, guys. So again, thanks for checking, checking, uh, checking my my descriptions there, Stephen. Uh, check in my descriptions. Uh, some of my other videos are gonna have the Cash App um, on the video. If not, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Give you that ID. It's basically just a Cash App ID. Um, whenever you're ready to. I don't really use it often. Okay, so my cash app is money sign and then TAT Express. So if you can see that, uh, it's, it's actually gonna be backwards right there. Let me type it in here. Let me type it in here for you guys. So this is my cash app ID, guys. If you guys are interested in leaving me uh, something for like a coffee, I like uh, I like Starbucks coffee so or uh, McDonald's coffee. So if you guys wanna buy me a coffee, I appreciate that. Okay, there's my cash app right there, guys. So check it out. I uh, appreciate everything. I appreciate guys your support. Stay tuned, guys. Everything's gonna get. We're even gonna get get even more more out with these lives. We're gonna have it streamed out. So we're really excited about that. Check out the new videos we got coming out this week. Uh, also, uh, if you got any friends that are interested in this type of content, make sure to request them or suggest uh, my videos to them. So I appreciate that. Until next time, guys. Be safe. Make sure to check out the videos this week. We're pretty excited about announcement we're going to be we're going to be pretty excited about announcement we're going to be releasing this week so see you guys later